My name is Shree and I'm going to walk you through um, kind of an example in a cookbook of using repetitions. Um, this is a new feature that we recently dropped as a part of the kind of data set to experiment workflow that we have going. And so I'm just going to walk you through a quick example of how to use it and some conceptual understanding of um, why it works, how it's important, and all of that fun stuff. So first I'm going to jump into kind of the more conceptual understanding portion of it. So I think one of the main ideas kind of lies um, in this. So large language models or LLMs are probabilistic, right? So that means that if I was to give the exact same prompt multiple times, so in this situation, I'm saying write a short review of this t-shirt, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get different outputs each time. Uh, sometimes the review will emphasize things like, okay, it's soft, comfortable, and versatile. We can see in this first one. Second one also says light wear, lightweight, comfortable, and perfect for everyday wear. And then the third one is soft, breathable, and holds up um, well after multiple washes. So we can see some overlap here in the words comfortable between the first two and the words soft between the last two. Um, but then like, for example, the last one introduces this new idea and concept of the fact that the t-shirt is breathable. And so the idea here is that you can have the same prompt, but have different outputs from the LLM every single time. And so imagine if I had a bunch of these queries, right? I can go ahead and take all of the um, LLM generated responses and put them in kind of the idea of a data set. So if I zoom out here, now I have this entire set of, okay, this t-shirt is, and then I have all of this data um, that I have collected. Now imagine if I am a, or you are, the owner of a huge clothing brand. Right, and here are kind of like what the custom reviews are like um, that you are experiencing. It could be about a t-shirt, it could be about pants, it could be about socks, it could be about any product that you own. And so if I have a bunch of these, I wanna go ahead and start to see where I can improve, right? So I wanna run classifications on them. I wanna know if uh, the reviews are positive or negative. I wanna know if um, they're about a shirt or a pair of pants or a sock or whatever, right? And so when you run evals, it might look something like this. So same data set, and then I have my classification evals. So essentially, this one is, is the review positive, negative, or neutral? So we can see we have a couple positive, we have the chunk of negatives in the middle, and then a couple neutrals here and there. Now, how am I running these classification evals? Um, I'm gonna use an LLM as a judge model to run these, but how can I know that I that my eval template that I had written um, is w doing well enough where the LLM has enough context or enough of a, a structure in how it's classifying to be able to give me the exact same label every single time. I essentially wanna make sure that um, my responses are not hallucinating or hallucinated um, that they're reliable and that if I was to run it over and over and over again, I'm not going to get negative the first try and positive the second try um, and neutral the third try, even if we want to go as far as to that. And so the idea here is, sure, I could write another eval of, I could have a hallucination eval, right? Um, if I want to test if it's actually positive, if it's actually correct, if my label is correct. But when it comes to that feeling of, okay, well, I get the same thing every single time, repetitions is something that you can kind of employ. There's another aspect to it that is like, if I want to employ a ground truth thing, right? Again, if it's nine examples like it is here, I'm very easily able to tell, okay, like the first one doesn't match up and then the second to last and the one right above that one also don't match up. So now I'm sitting here being like, okay, so the neutral and positive, it could have just been a one-off fluke, you know, like maybe it was like, like I said, it was a hallucination or something. Maybe it was just incorrect. But then when it came to the the bottom two errors, right, both of these two, I'm like, huh, like the ground truth said neutral and both of these labeled it positive. So now I'm thinking, is there something in my eval template that needs to change um, so that I'm able to get a more consistent answer over time and have it be aligned to my ground truth? And so if I run this classification eval one, two, ten times, right, will I get neutral majority of those times or if not all of those times? And so that's kind of a, a way in which repetition um, comes to play. 
So now jumping into our use case, I am actually going to go ahead and walk us through the exact same use case of a customer review. Um, and I'm basically going to be using repetitions to iterate and test my eval template. Um, do I need to change something in my eval template um, or my evals correct? And essentially that's the main idea of this. So like I said, you could use repetitions in many different forms for many different things, right? It doesn't just necessarily have to be for evals, but I think the evals um, shows you a good use case. So the way in which that we do this, if you run the notebook or follow along with this guide is that we're going to go ahead and install all of our libraries. So most importantly, we're going to install um, Arise Phoenix. And then I'm going to um, import my libraries and set my API keys as well as my OpenAI client and my Phoenix client. Um, and I'm just going to register a project, but this step is optional. And then for my actual custom reviews, I'm just creating a synthetic data set. Um, to do that, I I'm just creating a prompt and I'm going to ask an LLM to essentially create this data set for me. I give it some pretty strict instructions of, okay, like these are going to be for a clothing brand. I want you to write them in a way where they each of these like reviews fall into one of these categories. Um, I've defined them. So the categories are going to be highly positive and actionable, positive, but generic, neutral, negative, but actionable, highly negative and non-constructive and off topic. And essentially like my 25 reviews are going to be um, scattered and distributed across all six categories just so that we can make sure that we're having a pretty um, diverse, I guess, uh, data set, right? I'm going to give it some examples um, and then that is pretty much it. And then I'm going to run my LLM to generate the data and I'm going to create the data frame and then I'll be able to upload it into Phoenix. I wanted to quickly go through the Phoenix UI and show you where that is located. So on this left hand side, I can go to data sets and experiments and then click on my uh, data set. And this is what all of these examples look like. So from here, I can see we have a pretty good spread of off topic, negative, um, neutral, positive, um, all of the categories that I've said, we have a good distribution of uh, customer reviews. And now to actually run through our experiment. So I'm going to basically define my LLM as an eval, uh, LLM as a judge eval task. Um, so here's the first one that I did. Um, pretty simple, pretty basic. I just want uh, my judge to essentially look at the clothing review um, and be able to give it one of those labels. They're the exact same labels that I had told my synthetic data uh, LLM to use um, and I'm kind of treating that label in my data set as like a ground truth uh, so that we can just kind of quickly compare um, in this example. So I have defined my task and then to actually run my experiment all I'm going to do is just run my async run experiment function using my data set that I uploaded the task I just defined um, I'm going to give it my client uh, my experiment name and then this is the part where I define my repetitions. Um, so you could do one repetition, which that's not really a repetition, but you could do three, five, ten, whatever, um, just for your sanity check of like making sure that you're getting consistent results every single time. So now that I'm in my um, experiment view, we can go ahead and click through these and see that I do have, um, these are basically going to be the results of that LLM as a judge eval task. So I can go ahead and expand this, right? And I can see all three of my repetitions, um, all at once. So the idea here is that, okay, this one is highly negative and all three of my um, repetitions on my eval do say highly negative. So I'm pretty happy about this. As I click through these, I'm seeing that these that were highly negative all say highly negative. So I'm pretty confident in the fact that if I have a highly negative comment, um, my eval task will be able to label it correctly. As I'm clicking through these, okay, I have negative, but actionable. So this first one and this last one of the repetitions both say neutral and mixed, but the second one is correct. So I'm feeling a little less confident in my eval um, when it comes to things that are negative, but actionable. Okay, like I said, in this one, it works. This one, again, it's getting that neutral and mixed. And so I can kind of see that there's some kind of boundary difference between the neutral and the negative but actional that's a little bit blurry and not as well defined. So I can click through these and see, okay, neutral is great. It's hitting it out of the park. It's so good, right? And then I can go ahead and look through basically all of them. So we have, like I said, the highly positive, the off topic, whatever. 
Now, from first glance, I can see this one is off topic. It's supposed to be off topic, but I'm getting neutral and mixed for both of these examples. So I can click through these and see, okay, they're all actually getting neutral and mixed. Is this one any better? No. Is this one? No, it's actually even worse because it's says positive but generic. So now I'm pretty certain in, okay, it's not able to, um, yeah, and this one's not off topic. So it's not able to understand and label my off topic um, user request and reviews. So now I know that I need to go back into my eval template and kind of define that more strictly so that um, my eval classification is able to pick up on the off topic reviews. So I'm going to scroll down here um, and show my iteration of my of my eval prompt that I just had. And so I added this line that says uh, reviews about products from a clothing brand related to fashion, clothing, and apparel. And then I also went ahead and for these allowed labels, I just went ahead and defined every single one of them a little bit more, especially with the off topic saying not about clothing at all. It's a review mistakenly left from a different product or a different service. Um, and so I've kind of added a little bit more to it. And now I want to see if my changes have are going to yield any sort of improvement consistently so not just on the first repetition but if it's across all three so once again i'm going to go ahead and run um, my experiment the same way and back to my phoenix ui i can go ahead and click through and this is going to be uh, my second task and i can see off the bat that um, this first one is off topic and i did in fact get my classification to be off topic the second inter uh Repetition also said this, and the, the third one did not. Okay, so when I go to this one, first set it, second set it, and third set it. So I know that I'm doing a little bit better. Okay, this one again, neutral and mixed. N yeah, okay, so I know that there's a little bit more improvement that might need to be made when it comes to tweaking my eval um, prompt and template, but so far I'm feeling pretty confident, at least on this first iteration, I can click through these um, and see exactly where, again, I need to go back and redefine something or clarify something just so I'm able to get more consistent um, feedback, uh, more consistent results. And I think that's pretty much it for how to use repetitions um, when it comes to um, iterating on your evals for the specific use case of customer review and customer feedback. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, would love to help answer um, and kind of give you more examples of repetitions if that would help. Um, just go ahead and post in any of our Phoenix support channels um, and we'll be right there. Well, hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.